Lihana, okay. thank you for talking to me. Um, oh, obviously, you you're me. in a bit of a strange, not strange, but um, esoteric and exotic um, niche of the investment world. Um, you do whiskey uh, specifically. Uh, tell, tell, tell me a bit about um, the, the space. Um, so I guess, you know, it's actually not, it's, it's another, I would say, alternative asset investment class, if you will. People have been collecting wines and arts and coins, furnitures, um, jewelries, diamonds. I mean, those are things that people invest in, if you will. So whiskey just happens to be another asset class that people have been looking at for the past five years. Um, so yeah, like I myself, with, along with my three other business partners, we've been in this whiskey investment world for coming to six years now, since 2014. Now, you didn't um, start out in whiskey, right? Um, you started out in banking. And then, as you say, you finally just come to whiskey three, four years ago. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to me about that, about the transition. Um, I've always, I guess, I've always liked investment. You know, that's what I do for uh, my family office, and so that's what I study back in school. I did corporate finance, and then I was in banking for two and a half years. Uh, then moved on to, uh, I guess, if you will, the consumer uh, or luxury industry. Um, and I found the, the, I guess the space of whiskey investing to be quite fascinating. Like, you know, it's like you could drink your whiskey and still make money. Technically you're drinking for free or drinking to make money. So that's when I found it fascinating and compared to other asset classes, um, I see the reality of it on the fundamental of supply and demand and how the scarcity itself is beyond I guess it's more compared to um, the rest, uh, the le the rest of the collectibles, if you will. Okay, so um, how how is whiskey investment different from wine investment? Because that's in a way related, but much more established in, in certain respects. Yes. So wine. So when you when you talk about wine investment, wine actually. Um, they, I mean, every chateau or, or winemakers will produce a batch every single year. More or less, but it depends on distilleries and the weather or whatever. I mean, sorry, the wine, um, the winemakers themselves. But for whiskey, because whiskey has to be aged in barrels or cask. So for an 18 year old, the liquid will have to be in the cask for 18 years before you could bottle it. Because whiskey actually stop aging once you bottle. So that is time investment itself. And, you know, what we will be able to distill, to, distill today, you are not going to see the result of it for, you know, a long period to come. That's why there are a lot of distilleries that are not willing to age this whiskey for so long because they need the cash flow. And I think, you know, putting in comparison, you are talking about like there are thousands of wine, of vineyards in the world, right? And then when it comes to like whiskey, there's not even a thousand. So hence the supply and then the demand of it is also, you know, by actually, it, it, you can't even quite compare it because we're looking at very different. So to the investor, how does one get into the wide, wacky world of whiskey investing? <laughs> how does it, um, I guess you do need um, somewhat of a, or I mean, a lot of research. And you need, it's best that you have an expert with you. Honestly, I think we, I, I personally got lucky because um, one of my business partners uh, happens to be the former master distiller for McAllen, and then he was the rare whiskey director for Delmore. So having him on our team makes like the collecting a lot easier. Yeah, so what did he tell you to get you so um, excited about whiskey investing? Because um, I mean, anyone can go and buy some, you know, Hibiki or, or Yamazaki, you know, three years ago, or any of the, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, any of the uh, Scottish um, PT whiskeys from, I don't know, whatever, Port Charlotte or whatever, from say five years ago, and you would be in the money already, right? Um, and some people say you right. buy some Taiwanese whiskey today, uh, it's about to make money, right? So, so, so what are the dynamics involved in the whole world of whiskey investing? Um, I think it comes down to scarcity. So anything that's limited edition, 
um, you know, when you buy a bottle, then if you see if it's a sing from a single cast bottling, so, you know, usually it's actually bottle, um, it is bottle number one out of, you know, they say 150 bottles. So meaning there are only 150 bottles of that ever produced and you're holding one of the bottle, one of the 150 bottles. So that's very important. H is very important. So, um, you know, when you say 30 year old, like there is not going to be another batch of 30 year old another 30 years from now. So you want to buy the older stuff. And I think what I would actually emphasize is um, look for something that is, I would say old and rare will be the highlight, but also be very careful to where you source the bottles, right? Like, so you need to know um, the sourcing um, has to be, like it has to be a valid source. Like you can't just go, you know, buying from auction houses, I would say you're safe majority of the time. There are some occasions where, the fake ones are so good. Okay. So yeah, that's another. So um, obviously, it's it's not a it's not a small game, right? Uh, obviously, when you go in and invest in whiskey, um, you don't want to just be buying one one, one bottle or one case. Um, is is that right? Is that an assumption which is correct, or or can you can you still play small, or can you must you only yes. play big? I think. I mean, you can start, I mean, it's literally like buying shares in the stock market, if you will, right? Like you could buy two shares of, I don't know, Diageo, right? Or you could buy 10,000 depending on capacity. But if you're looking to, I think it's, if you're looking for a significant return, of course, you have to go in with a bigger amount. But I would encourage anyone who's like interested in starting in whiskey investment to at least start with like 10,000 pounds. Like that would be, you know. Is the minimum to start. Ten thousand pounds sterling. Yes. Okay. So, so what what does ten thousand pounds sterling get you? Ten thousand pound. You could get actually a fairly young cost, a small cost. Um, you know, maybe um, an eight euro. I want to say like like maybe an eight euro Bunnahabin, for example, like around there, and you can like, age it for another. 12 years and make it 20 euro and then you bottle it, right? Because 20, so another 12 years, it will be a 20 euro bunahab and today we'll probably, I'm trying to see on top of my head, maybe two, uh, three times, at least three times your money. Okay, so you, you're gonna get 300% over the next 10 years, typically. Yeah. So that would be about 30% a year. Yeah. So how, how how reliable is that uh, return on investment? Um, what are the risks? Is this weather so, a risk? Is um, distillery uh, management a risk? Is, um, I don't know, is um, foul play a risk? Um, and I how much are insurance that, costs? What are, what are the costs are involved? Insurance costs? Um, uh, so a few things, so warehousing, Right. So if you buy it or, you know, buy, but you buy it from a distillery for, or a, a secondhand market, if you will, um, then you literally will have to, I guess, like store this cost somewhere. Right. So I guess warehousing will be number one. Uh, insurance will be your another cost. And then potentially getting the warehouse to help you monitor the process the, the process the aging process of the cast will be on their expense um yeah but pretty much that's like your major like majority of the maintenance goes into that um the risk i mean of course you can buy insurance to cover like if there's any fire at the warehouse whatnot um and i mean the premium is really not that much is i mean i don't know on top of my head like if you because usually when you, for us to buy insurance, we already buy an umbrella insurance to cover the entire warehouse. But as an individual, I mean, getting a quota, I would say like, let's just say you, you, this value is 10,000 pound and you want to you want to insure it for 20,000 pound and you just pay like the premium is like 0.2% plus VAT or whatever um, for the insurance. So it's really not that much. And storage in Scotland is also very reasonable. So a holding period of 10 years, is that typical or, or is that ideal? And, and then if, if it's a 10 year holding period, um, are, you, are you locked into the 10 year or can you come out at any time? You can come out at any time. You, you can always, this is why I also mentioned the secondhand market, meaning 
let's say you you buy an eight euro cast and buy you know by like twelve you know when the cast is twelve euro you say okay this is too good to age for another five years but I want out so you can actually sell your cast to someone else and someone can continue aging the cast or someone else is like this strawberry tastes amazing I want to just bottle it and sell back in the market. They could do that as well. So there's no definite, but what you want to look look out for is the ABV or which is the alcohol percentage from the cast. So if it's, you know, let's say sitting at 45%, then this is when you know you want to bottle because in Scotland, you have to bottle the whiskey above 40%. So you don't want it to go under. Yeah. I see, I see. Okay, and how liquid is the market? Can you, uh, are there a lot of buyers and sellers? Um, there are definitely a lot of buyers and sellers. So just to give you a high level, I think, uh, so 2019, uh, the total number of bottles sold at auction was at 143,000. Um, and that was 33% higher than uh, 2018 number. So this is like how many bottles that were transacted in the UK itself, right? Okay. And then, yeah, when you talk about value, uh, that 143,000 bottles were valued at 57.7 million pound, pounds sterling. So, so this how, is just like the market size in the UK auction market. So how does the whiskey investment um, compare relative to, relative to other um, you know, alternative assets. An alternative could mean um, Bitcoin, could mean gold, yeah. could mean silver, could mean uh, art. You know, how, how does it compare in terms yes. of resilience and, and inflation hedging? Um, I think, so there, there is no correlation. Um, the, I mean, gold and a gold is actually up quite high. Um, I think January to April's number, like go was up 12.7% and whiskey was up 3.54%. And, you know, like the Hang Seng and the Dow Jones and, you know, crude oil itself, everything else is down, right? And crude oil, is, brand crude oil itself is down 53%. So in terms of that, you can see that actually with the COVID and everything, there's no correlation between the equity market and the commodities versus um, whiskey. And I think another thing is, you know, to highlight is that because it's a consumable, it's different from Bitcoin, different from um, art where you can't consume. So whiskey is like, we have, let's say it's like a point, a, a, the example at 150 bottles in a world, if I were to drink one bottle today, means there are only 149 bottles left. So, meaning sometimes, you know, when you talk about, you know, I, I, people love because it's like, okay, well, if I don't drink it, I was like, yeah, you won't drink it. Doesn't mean someone else is like thinking that this is a good investment, so they won't drink it either, right? So I might see this as like a very rare bottle. Someone is like, oh, this tastes so good. Let me finish two bottles of it tonight. So, and, but those people are going to drive up the value. So, and it's a little bit different compared to the other asset classes that you pointed out. Okay. Um, so, so lastly, what, what kind of people invest in whiskey? And what are some of the key trends that you're seeing now in the world of whiskey investing? Um, so I would say that people, when we first started, um, our observation is uh, mainly whiskey lovers, people that love their whiskey because, um, yeah, of course, I mean, they also started with wine and then moved on to whiskey. I would say a majority of them. Um, and then I guess nowadays I see people investing more in whiskey casks instead of bottles. They buy into entire casks and the aging potential and the growth potential of casks is actually a lot higher. So that it's like, I wouldn't say the trend, but I, I guess people are understanding the market a little bit better and then moving away from bottles to casks. But of course, bottles are still very good value. I mean, you know, the auction prices have gone crazy. Um, I don't know if you follow. So the, the most expensive bottle sold was October 2019 at Sotheby's uh, in the UK for 1.2 million pounds. It was a 1926 60 euro Macau. Okay. 
Okay. So that was like, yeah. So what are some of the key trends in terms of um, Scottish versus Japanese versus Taiwanese versus Smokey versus mm -hmm. PT versus whatever, whatever, Speyside, you know, light and easy, aromatic, you know, uh, I don't know a lot about whiskey, but I, I know there's, there's different countries and different tastes. Yes. Um, are, you, are you asking from an investment standpoint or from an investment from standpoint? Like, yeah. Okay. What are, buy, what are um, buyers going for? I would say buyers are looking for, you know, highlighting anything that's limited edition. Um, you know, single cast bottling will be the most desirable. Single so cast anything, bottling, okay. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? So you buy a, a single cask bottle. So you, so if you're an investor, you buy a cask. Is that right? You, yes, you could do that. Or what you, you know, or, or you could do is when there's, you know, when you, when you look in a market, let's say McAllen, there are so, so many like different kind of, or well, I'm just putting up McAllen out there because it's people, it's a lot easier for people to understand. So you can see McAllen 30 euro. And uh, that is what we call bottling, a vetting bottling, right? So meaning it comes from like maybe five different casts of 30 euro McAllen. So you got thousands of bottles of Macallan 30. When you say single cast, meaning so this particular cast, it only yield maybe 200 bottles. So this Macallan 30 from this cast has only 200 bottles. So that became very, very limited. So this is what you're, you know, what you're after. First off, it's original bottling from Macallan. And it's from that particular cast means that only 200 bottles in the world, meaning the prices will be higher, but it is also very unique to this 200 bottle, 200, I guess, whoever that buys this 200 bottles of the very few owners in the world, instead of the thousands of bottles from the vetting. Okay, that was fascinating. Um, I'll be sure to put your details in the description below, but uh, thank you for talking to me, Nikwa. That was yeah, a huge no pleasure. Problem. Okay, thanks. Thank you.